<laughs> now, if I'm Intel at this point, I'm hoping beyond hope that Ryzen has reached his full potential. Zen 2 basically spelled the end for the lakes in enthusiast size, so much so that it's now starting to leak into the mainstream even. But unfortunately for Intel, those enthusiasts have been busy and it ain't the end. One Osmus, is that how I pronounce that? Of the Ryzen DRM calculator fame, reached out to us with a special little project that he's calling Workstation Tool. It's an automatic overclocking and simultaneous under volting tool that promises to both improve performance and decrease power consumption on your AMD Ryzen processor. Is it over? Does AMD have the high ground? Let's fire it up and see for ourselves, shall we? And we're gonna see if today's video is brought to you by Glasswire. Yes, it is. Instantly see your current and past network activity with Glasswire. You can detect malware and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device and use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link down below. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Come on, <laughs> this is just another one of those PC performance tune-up tools, registry cleaners, that claims it's gonna improve performance but actually doesn't do anything. And I understand your skepticism. We even had someone reach out about sponsoring a video with their performance tuning tool and I install this thing and I'm like, okay, so I've got all these numbers that say, oh, you are going 30% faster on networking. But I was like, hey, what benchmarks can I run to demonstrate it's working? They were like, oh, you wanna run benchmarks? Oh, what? No. We have from One Osmus screenshots showing in real benchmarks that people actually use, like Cinebench, as much as a 9% performance improvement after running this software. And the craziest part, he's providing it to the community for free. Now, it is a little bit complicated to set up, which is why I brought in Anthony. Hello. It's not as complicated as Zen underclocking has been in the past. First, you need to make sure that you're using a Zen 2 CPU. Zen 1 and Zen Plus, as well as Renoir APUs, are not currently supported. You'll also need to make sure your BIOS is up to date with the GSEF 1.0.0.4 combo Pi being the lowest one Osmus has tested to work. While you're in your BIOS, there are still some settings you'll need to change as well. You need to make sure your CPU load line calibration setting is set to level four for ASUS motherboards or level three for other vendors. And you'll want to set CPU phase control to standard if your motherboard has a setting for it. ASUS motherboards also have a CPU current capability setting, which you should set to 100%. And once all that's done, save your changes and boot into Windows where you'll want to make sure you've got .NET Framework 4.8 or higher installed, and then download Ryzen Master, as this is how the app gets its power, frequency, and temperature readings. With all that done, you're almost ready to get started. Download and extract the archive to a folder you can access. We use the desktop. And then download and extract Cinebench from Maxon's website, not the Windows Store. This version doesn't work. The app actually uses Cinebench as a useful before and after comparison between settings, and maintains a database of your performance results. When all that's done, we just run WST in the main folder, just like this. Here's the app, and what you'll see here at the top is a bunch of information constantly updating. This is coming from Ryzen Master. On the left-hand column, we have the core numbers. So we've got core one, core two, core three, core four, on CCX1, five, six, seven, eight, on CCX2, et cetera. In the middle, we have the effective clock speed of each of these cores. Right now, they're basically nothing because the system is more or less idle. And on the right hand side, we have a number that indicates exactly how good the core is for overclocking. This is the uh, number that the BIOS indicates to Windows to tell it which cores it should more heavily load. So for our system here, looks like CCX1 has pretty good cores. CCX2 is, eh, it's all right. CCX3, not so great. Four, that seems to be the lowest out of them all. Five is pretty good. Actually, that's the best of them all. We also have CPU usage, CPU temperature, current voltage, total package power, as well as some other uh, AMD related power metrics here. Let's take a look at the settings. What the app does is it takes the reference frequency here, which is the starting level, and the maximum frequency that you enter in, which is the end level. And what it does is it steps through each of those frequencies 
testing it each time to see which cores are actually running at those frequencies, which ones are erroring out, which ones are getting too hot, that kind of thing. As it does that, that's where cycle time comes in. 240 seconds, that is four minutes, is the default for how long it uh, tests each iteration. You can imagine this takes quite a while to do, but the outcome should be pretty great. Now, a couple of other settings here are a little bit confusing. CCX Delta, this is actually set on a per CPU basis and it should be set automatically based on what your CPU is. That being said, it's not something to really worry about. Ryzen 3 to 5 and 7, I think, are uh, good for 75 megahertz. Ryzen 9, I think, is 150, and uh, Threadripper is 75 to 100. We also have the testing mode here. Currently, it's on AVX Lite, uh, which uh, one Osmus actually says is similar in terms of power draw to what you might expect from a full AVX workload, except it's not quite as hot, so it's useful for testing coolers that are a little bit less capable than what we have here. The only other thing that's going to be relevant for most people is the reference voltage and target voltage. Again, this is the start and end points, uh, much like the frequency here. These are all pre-configured with values that the software kind of thinks you might want to use. So, I mean, if you want, you can just hit start and see what happens. Otherwise, yeah, you can tweak these things like the maximum temperature or where you want to start and stop just to kind of narrow things down or yeah, try your luck. Aside from that, there's not a whole lot else to the program itself. So uh, let me go ahead and set a short cycle time and uh, hit start and see what happens. So the first thing that's going to happen is Cinebench R20 is going to pop up and it's going to do a baseline run. This is your CPU as it is normally. So uh, let's see what we get here. It's a 3970X. Looks like there was a previous run on this that was 16927. Let's see what we get here. 16932, a little bit better. Now it's going to go through. It set the parameters that we have here. So it uh, we, we only have 4000 set for both the reference and max frequency and 1100 for the reference and target voltage. One of the most interesting and really exciting things about this program is that not only does it do all of this, it still works with all of AMD's power management features. You're basically getting the best of both worlds between a straight underclock as well as overclocking per CCX. It should make a huge difference. So that's it run the utility and everything's dialed in. I'm ready to get my performance gains. Basically, yeah, it does take a little bit more effort than that. Uh, it does require a little bit of tweaking from the user's perspective, especially for a chip that uh, OneOsmos hasn't actually tested yet, which is the 3970X. He's got a 3960X. So it took me a little bit of doing and a few B sods later, but here we are and uh, should have everything all dialed in for a nice undervolt. It's actually a little bit slightly overclocked as well. So it's about 3.9 on all cores with uh, a couple of CCXs dialed back one or two ticks. That's really cool having that level of granularity where you can just like AMD would tune them at the factory. Go, okay, yeah, this one's ever so slightly better than that one. Let's. Turn it up just a little bit more, super cool. Yeah, like you could do this manually with Ryzen Master, but like from experience, it takes a lot longer than this does and it is not as automated. So like to do all of this would have taken so much longer because I had to set up all the testing myself. I'd had to crank everything on my own. And you'd have to be sitting there staring at it the whole time. Yeah. Okay, so I can run Cinebench then. Yeah. Theoretically, there's not really a whole lot to go wrong here. If it's overclocked, then it's gonna be faster. Unless it crashes. Unless it crashes. Boy, these things are fast, ain't they? Oh, yeah. Now, one tip we got from Onosmos via email as we were going back and forth about this was that the tool works best for CPUs that have more CCXs. So, wait, what was our before number? The before number was uh, 16, nine something. That is a smaller performance gain than I expected. It's small, but at the same time, the actual overclock was small. It's within about 100 megahertz of what it would normally be doing. So that could come down to us just having a chip that doesn't undervolt and overclock particularly well then. Yeah, I, I tried doing a more aggressive overclock and while I could get stable results, it wasn't consistent. And I think that might be down to either our chip or our um, load line calibration or phase control settings. While dialing it in, it's best to have it on standard, like I said, but uh, he came back and said, hey, if you're having issues with it, with stability, try setting it to extreme anyway, and that should give you a little bit more overhead as far as stability goes. It might incre increase your thermals, but that's, yeah, I mean, when you're dialing it in, that's less of a problem. So then should we have a look at what our thermals ended up? Like, do you have the before thermals? Well, I have, if you go to the benchmark tab here, this is our before run and this is our after run. 
and our power usage is over there as well, before and after. Wow, so 30 watts less and ever so slightly greater performance. Yeah, so if I were to keep the same level of power, I could increase the performance more. The only problem, again, being that this is a pre-production piece of software and not tested on every chip. He's gonna have it all massaged out by the time it's ready for release, so. And the price is definitely right. <laughs> In a nutshell, WST does automatically what we used to have to do manually when overclocking our processors. And what I think is really cool is the fact that it uses the same standard tools for both measuring improvements in performance as well as validating stability that we as enthusiasts have been using for years and years. Now, as you've seen here, your mileage may vary. You might not get a ton more performance or you might not even get a power consumption improvement. There's nothing that one us miss can do about how good your chip came out of the factory, but at least you've got it now. And this really puts like custom levels of tuning over clocking in the hands of people who only really know how to press one button. Pretty neat. You know what else is neat? Manscaped. Manscaped's perfect package 3.0 kit includes everything you need to take your junk grooming to the next level. It includes their Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof body trimmer with its ergonomic design and quality ceramic blades built with their advanced skin safe technology. The blades are replaceable and they're 100% compatible with the Lawnmower 2.0 and the 3.0. And it's got a powerful 7,000 RPM motor and 600 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. It's even cordless and waterproof, so you can trim your ball hair wherever you happen to be, even in the rain or more likely in the shower. That actually makes a lot more sense. They've got a new compact anti-tug adjustable trimmer guard and a built-in LED light, and you can get 20% off and free shipping on your Perfect Package 3.0 when you check out our link down below. Totally intentional, by the way. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy this kind of like tuning software, Wow, have we done much in the way of like tuning software before? There hasn't really been much. We never, even, we never even checked out his last piece of software, so we're not gonna throw to our video. Find a really good video on... Um, DRAM uh, calculator? DRAM calculator. Yeah. Yeah, find a good one on DRAM calculator, and we'll just kind of throw to that. It's also from Onesimus, and also free. <laughs>